Good morning. Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Honourable Ministers, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you on behalf of the Commonwealth Games Federation to the Commonwealth Sports Breakfast. At this time of increasing significance for the Commonwealth, and as the baton passes from the Gold Coast to Birmingham in 2022, we hope that this morning will be an opportunity for you to hear about the Commonwealth's sport development ambitions and the Commonwealth's united interest in tackling common social challenges as we work together towards a common future. Before we begin, and before I introduce our hosts for this morning, please will you join me in remembering a spectacular and sensational Commonwealth Games that took place on the Gold Coast only days ago. Fantastic 11 days of sport it was. I hope those of you who were fortunate enough to be there have recovered, and those of you who watched it on your television screens here thoroughly enjoyed it too. So without further ado, we're delighted to welcome our hosts for today. We have the Vice Patron of the Commonwealth Games Federation, His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex. Thank you for joining us this morning. The Commonwealth Games Federation President, Louise Martin, and the Secretary of State for the Department of Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, the Right Honourable Matt Hancock MP. So thank you very much all for joining us and hosting this morning. I'd like to invite up to the stage His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex to begin proceedings. Your Royal <laughs> Highness. The only reason that we're listed as hosts is because we're the only ones that have to speak. The rest of you can all relax and enjoy yourselves. Um, but may I also add my welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for turning up here on, on very early on, uh, on a Friday morning. And, uh, and just to add my thanks and appreciation on behalf of, of the Federation, not just to Australia for a fantastic uh, Commonwealth Games recently, but also all our CGAs, athletes, and everybody else who are so critical to actually delivering those sports and making it such a spectacle that it is. Um, as Ben said, I'm the vice patron, so my job is basically just to represent the Queen at the events themselves. And uh, I see myself as a, as, as a bit of a critical friend, but, uh, but as a very enthusiastic and passionate supporter of Commonwealth, Commonwealth sport. Um, there are two key things I just want to, to, to highlight today, one of the many myriad of things that the Federation is doing, and, uh, and of, which I hope is of particular interest to everybody, which is, first of all, the whole business of sports development. Uh, the whole business of how do we use the, the, the impact and the effect of the Commonwealth Games to be able to generate uh, a greater development in sport in the intervening period? And how do we measure and lean on our friends to be able to make sure that the, that, 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 that the sporting programme within the Commonwealth continues to grow and develop? Um, and we set up our sports foundation to help us to be able to do that better and hopefully to be able to attract friends from outside who want to partner with us to deliver that better. Um, and we want to be able to work greater with our uh, federations, different sports federations, to make sure that the sport of Commonwealth continues to grow and develop, and that we can see a greater competitiveness across all those sports and a greater participation. And the, uh, the initial effects of some of that work um, are really encouraging, I'm, but I'm going to leave Louise to be able to tell you a little bit about that. And the other one, the other key development track I want to raise is, is the whole issue about our um, integration and inclusion. I'm delighted that there was a, a little bit of a clip there of the, uh, the javelin competition. Uh, but we managed to increase the, the participation of para-athletes within the Commonwealth Greens by 73% on the Gold Coast, which is fantastic. But it's still not really quite good enough. We have to get this better. We have to be able to make sure that the competitions that we run at the Commonwealth Games um, are, are truly uh, transparent and understandable by spectators, and that the athletes themselves feel that it is a genuine competition. Um, it's like they love the inclusion, they love being a part of the whole the Games, and the Commonwealth has been leading this along the way. 
Um, but what I would say is, you know, when you go back to your different countries, please spread that message and encourage your national sports to integrate at home so that para-athletes and able-bodied athletes at the elite level train together and learn from each other so that when they come to these events or go on to the, uh, the Paralympics, they are better prepared and, and the Commonwealth can continue to lead the way in that. So those are the two things, I've, the two clear messages I'd like you to take away and spread uh, as far as wide as you can. Um, and now I'm going to ask Louise to, uh, to come and tell you a little bit about, more about uh, the effects of some of that work and also the achievements on the Gold Coast. So Louise, can I hand over to you please? Thank you, Royal Highness, and good morning everybody. You know, I'd like to welcome the Secretary of State, um, Barbara Scotland, Secretary General, heads, distinguished guests, and my athletes. Thank you for joining us this morning. You are the ones that this is all about. So uh, thank you for coming here. Um, I'm delighted to be hosting the breakfast with His Royal Highness because we had some really inspirational sporting moments in Gold Coast last week. Boy, it seemed a lot longer than that, but uh, it was fantastic. Um, Gold Coast 2018 was hugely successful and widely praised, which was excellent as it followed the 9th Commonwealth Sports Ministers meeting. The synergies between the outcomes of that meeting and the vision of the common sports movement they were clear, namely in our joint commitment to maximise the valuable contribution sport can make across our family of nations, and the realisation that well-governed and inclusive sport with strong integrity measures and human rights protections is essential to achieve such impact. The commitment of that meeting to further engage and coordinate the Commonwealth Games Federation provides an impetus to strengthen collaboration and sporting organisations working with the commercial and civil society partners. An example of this was the 2017 Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas, delivered for a thousand young people from across the Commonwealth, inspiring them to unlock their own potential and aspire to reach the goals. Some of the Youth Games athletes also made their debut in the Gold Coast, demonstrating the pathway which exists with Commonwealth athletes. The Gold Coast Games profiled Commonwealth sport at its very best. We saw a record number of medal winning nations and territories, 43 out of the 71 teams raising the bar yet again by securing their sport the spot on the podium. That was terrific. Also, there were nine world and 91 Commonwealth Games records set. This was truly extraordinary. And there was something for everyone, with five countries winning their first ever Commonwealth medal. Vanuatu, Cook Islands, Solomon Islands, British Virgin Islands and Dominica, demonstrating their progress at the Games. There were some remarkable and captivating Commonwealth stories from the first ever Jamaican lawn bowls team, the Ready Rollers, <coughs> uh, to the first ever Ugandan netball team competing so strongly, and in my opinion, in one of the standout sports of these Games. The best of the modern Commonwealth shone through, a diverse yet incredibly unified family of nations with a Commonwealth connection, be it the athletes, volunteers or fans, all enjoying and embracing Commonwealth sport. On the Gold Coast, what we witnessed, and hopefully what you saw on your televisions, gave the Commonwealth a spring in its step leading into this Commonwealth Summit. And of course, as we begin the journey to Birmingham 2022, since the last Chobham, an exciting example of the work which we have undertaken within our development programme <coughs> excuse me, was the Games Athlete Programme. The GAP programme, as it is known, was created to financially and strategically support talented athletes to the Games. All of the five countries that won their first ever Commonwealth medal were beneficiaries of the GAP programme, which is remarkable. And so I, personally, am committed to seeing the programme grow. The Women's Coaching Internship Programme is another exciting innovation. This initiative offered 20 aspiring female coaches from across the Commonwealth the opportunity to be mentored by and fully integrated within the CGA's own coaching setup. This will continue to help build women's coaching capacity and develop advocates for the profession throughout the Commonwealth and in turn stand to benefit athletes from all Commonwealth countries and territories. Gold Coast 2018 was also the first time we implemented an equal number of medal events for men and women. Within basketball, hockey and swimming, we secured gender parity amongst the technical officials. 
and we saw a huge increase in the percentage of male technical officials presiding over diving, netball and artistic gymnastics. Equality works both ways and I think we have really set the global standard for championing gender parity in sport. Another of our achievements at these games was that we had the largest ever fully integrated para-sport programme. This approach is unique in international multi-sport events. The Commonwealth Games Federation has an overarching commitment to reconciliation. Firstly, the reconciliation and respect of the First Nations people of Australia. Secondly, to ensure that the indigenous people of the area, the Yugambe people, were integrated within the Games. This programme was a resounding success and shifted public discourse on this important matter with the Australia, within, within Australia and the broader Commonwealth. And I was delighted to see that the Commonwealth Forum of National Human Rights Institution hosted its biennial meeting at the summit this week and adopted a declaration. And I urge you all to read the London Declaration on Sport and Human Rights. The institution has indicated that it wishes for a stronger relationship with the Commonwealth Games Federation and we look forward to taking this further. As part of the commitment to development, the CGF has created the Commonwealth Sports Foundation. Its vision is to centralise, focus and to grow the development work of the Federation. And so, within the context of Birmingham 22, there will be a fantastic opportunity to nurture, develop sport right across the Commonwealth. The benefits of continuing and increasing our development work collectively will enable us to grow sporting capacity and competency in your countries. As we look ahead to the 22nd Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England, in just over four years' time, we can do so in the knowledge that the Commonwealth sport is in better health than it's ever been. Indeed, our Commonwealth sports movement is more relevant than ever before. Birmingham will be such a fitting host of the Commonwealth Games, for in so many ways it is truly the Commonwealth city. It's an incredible diversity. It is a microcosm of the Commonwealth itself, with a population made up of people that can trace their roots to back to all 71 Commonwealth nations and territories. This will be a fantastic asset for the Games, as all 71 teams will be able to count on the support of their fans, the Commonwealth diaspora, that have made Birmingham their home. These are indeed exciting times for the Commonwealth sport, and I invite you to join us on our journey as we enter this momentous time for a family of nations. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming this morning. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. Uh, before we move on to our third speech, uh, if I could just uh, mark, this, mark this moment by thanking the Commonwealth Secretary General for joining us this morning, uh, Baroness Scotland, thank you very much for, for joining us. And I'm, I'm, I'm aware you have to depart for Windsor Castle, so I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. So our third speaker uh, today, if I could invite up to stage, Say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Invite up to stage the uh, sec UK Secretary of Sport for, sorry, Secretary of State for D Digital Culture, Media and Sport, Matt Hancock. Matt. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that introduction, Your Royal Highness, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here to celebrate the Commonwealth. And I think that this uh, breakfast and the games in Australia have shown that the Commonwealth is as relevant and important today as it has ever been. It's an enduring bond that exists between us all, and it stands for our shared belief in beacons of freedom. And the phenomenal games uh, on the Gold Coast showed the strength of the connection uh, between our countries and the powerful role of sport in bringing people together. Uh, we've seen this world-class uh, sport, enthusiastic crowds, a record number of nations celebrating medals, and wonderful to see so many success stories uh, from the home nations too. Um, I, I hope that you will allow me uh, to celebrate the success that we had um, here at home. Duncan Scott's sixth medal hall in the pool. Northern Ireland's Rhys McClellan on the pommel horse. Holly Arnold making Wales proud with her world record javelin uh, that we saw. 
And I am particularly thrilled at Team England's last minute victory in the netball. Netball! <laughs> Our Australian friends have dominated netball for so long that you absolutely took it to them. I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm personally, um, you may think that this is a joke, but it is true. But you and I are going to go and play some netball uh, straight after uh, this uh, breakfast. Um, I haven't played netball for 20 years since I played in my college mixed netball team uh, all that time back. And I've been inspired to get back on the pitch by the, uh, by the England performance. Um, but I just wanted to reflect very briefly on the impact of this and the impact of sport. Because sport is a social good. It's, it, it's of course good in and of itself. But it also brings people together. It can improve physical and mental health. It provides valuable leadership skills. It promotes social integration. It's an important way of promoting equality through giving a spotlight to positive role models from underrepresented groups. I've always loved watching para sports. Um, Owen Pick, one of England's promising para athletes, that hails from my constituency. Uh, the wheelchair basketball was a highlight of the Paralympics in London 2012. Uh, I, I'm thrilled that this was the largest ever para sport programme and a real shining example of diversity of the Commonwealth sports movement. Um, but we need sport to remain a social good, and we need to make that means making sure it's open to all. So I want to underline what Louise said in the context of making sure the Commonwealth Games are open to all. This has a broader, important impact on our societies. We need to maintain this focus of making sure that we cast aside barriers to taking part in the sports that we love. And we need to keep sharing information and knowledge across the Commonwealth on how to use sport to bring people together so that everybody can have the chance to represent their nation. And sport, as well as being a social group, is a, at its best a reflection of our common values. In the past six years, we've welcomed uh, the world to the UK for some amazing events. The Olympics, the Paris, uh, the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in Scotland, the Rugby Union World Cup, the Rugby League World Cup, the Athletics Championships, and many more. And all of these have something in common. They showed our nation at its best to the world. Welcoming, open, gregarious, enthusiastic, and host cities and exhilarating celebrations of talent from across the world. And this brings me to Birmingham. This is what's going to happen in Birmingham 22. Uh, Councillor Anne Underwood, I'm delighted that you could join us this morning. Birmingham is England's most diverse city outside of London. It reflects the kaleidoscope of cultures that can be found across the Commonwealth. And believe it or not, Birmingham is one of the youngest cities in Europe, at a time when 60% of the Commonwealth is aged 30 or under. And we saw at Birmingham's brilliant handover performance on Sunday, youth engagement will be a major theme of those games, aimed to promote young people on the world stage, whether athletes or performers or volunteers. And my final point is this, sport is a social good, it represents our common values, and it also reflects our common future. And the Birmingham Games are going to be unambiguously about the future, the future of the region, of our nation, and as a first-class destination for tourism and trade, boosting regeneration in the area with big, exciting plans for housing projects and a lasting legacy, and it will drive an outstanding cultural programme reaching right across the Commonwealth, telling the story of one of our most vibrant uh, cities. Sport isn't just about what takes place on the pitch, or the track, or in the pool. It's also a great opportunity to spark new relationships and forge new deals. And we are committed to building these strong and enduring trade partnerships with our friends right across the Commonwealth. And as part of that mission, there'll be an <coughs> expo around the Birmingham Games and a four-year programme from now to then to build on the links from Commonwealth, uh, with Commonwealth nations. So, the Expo, the Commonwealth Games, an important milestone in the rich and colourful history of Birmingham.
is Birmingham's chance next to show its place at the heart and soul of the Commonwealth, bringing together athletes and supporters from across the world. So I hope that I've managed to put these games and sport as a whole in the broader context of the big impact that they're having on our country and on our Commonwealth, promoting the power of sport to help change lives for the better. So we've got four years till the next ones. Let us celebrate what was achieved on the Gold Coast and let us work together to provide the opportunities and the inspiration to go for gold across the Commonwealth of our great nations. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you to the Secretary of State. Uh, before we wrap up the formal part of this morning's breakfast, let's just take a couple of minutes to remind ourselves of what the modern Commonwealth sports movement is all about. Since 1930, members of the Commonwealth of Nations have celebrated a tradition of sporting competition. One, two, three, four, five in the swimming pool, a new Commonwealth record for Thorpe. 88 years later, in this age of opportunity and renewed relevance for the Commonwealth, the notions of our movement and what it represents are more vital than ever before. For me, the Commonwealth Games means that we can share the very best of what is in the Commonwealth and also being able to share the cultures and the traditions that are so many and so different. You've no idea what it felt to be told that you're going to games, especially your first games at the age of 15 and 16, and um, never having been on a plane before, never having been outside the UK before. We, Campbell and Scotland, had the perfect shot. We had a very small team. There was only four girls in that team. To be selected to represent Scotland, we were awestruck. Absolutely awestruck. People are starting to identify with the Commonwealth once again. This unique family of nations is seen as a force for good in the world. And the athletes, as leaders and ambassadors for Commonwealth sport, they see the opportunity they have to improve and transform society for the 2.4 billion citizens in communities all across the Commonwealth. These athletes truly embody who we are as a modern Commonwealth, sport with a social conscience and impact. Through Commonwealth sport and our collective values, we're shifting the dial on indigenous rights, human rights and gender equality. With Gold Coast 2018, preparations for Birmingham 2022, new members joining our family of nations. The Commonwealth is in the spotlight once more. The Commonwealth Games are so completely different from any of the other major big games because we all have the shared values. Our uniqueness is our diversity and unity. The Commonwealth is more relevant than ever before. Wins his third consecutive title at the Commonwealth Games, just the second man to do so. It's England! Oh my goodness! Commonwealth sport is changing the world one day at a time. encapsulation of what we saw on the Gold Coast and what we feel the modern Commonwealth sports movement is about today. Louise, apologies for digging up that footage, but we couldn't help it. <laughs> Thank you very much all for joining. That does conclude the formal part of our proceedings this morning. There is still going to be plenty of breakfast and coffee for the next half an hour or so. And before we do wrap up, I would like to say thank you very much to His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex to Louise, the CDF President, and to the Secretary of State as well. So thank you very much for joining us. 
We do have an opportunity now for the heads and foreign secretaries to join us for a photograph just on the far side of the screen. So if I could ask those that are here to make their way up and then we will then carry on with half an hour more of breakfast and networking. So thank you very much indeed.